piezoelectric pressure sensors have very high natural frequencies and are thus ideal for applications where fast pressure rise times of up to 1 microseconds have to be measured. Piezoelectric pressure sensors are the first choice as well for the measurement of very small pressure pulsations at high static pressure levels. These enable the long-term measurement of very small pressure pulsations with high resolution and excellent signal-to-noise ratio for a frequency range of over 100 kHz. Due to their principle of operation, piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge output display a small drift when a static pressure is applied. By contrast, sensors based on the piezoresistive principle operate largely free of drift. Piezoresistive pressure sensors are, however, when compared to piezoelectric pressure sensors, quite limited in their operating temperature range. Because of this, piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge output are commonly used in applications in need to measure static pressures at extreme temperature environments. In piezoelectric pressure sensors, the measuring element is based on a crystal that produces an electrical charge proportional to the pressure applied. This effect is commonly known as the piezoelectric effect. Measuring elements are cut out of the crystal in different shapes, depending on the sensor characteristics needed. I will use the sensor model shown on this slide for a better explanation of how a piezoelectric pressure sensor works. The pressure to be measured is transmitted via the diaphragm as a proportional force to the piezo crystals. In the sensor type shown, a helical shaped spring contacts the metal coated crystal surface, which acts as an electrode and carries the electrical charge to the connector. The electrical charge generated by a piezoelectric sensor is in the order of a few picocalms only. This tiny charge needs to be converted by a charge amplifier into a voltage signal that can then be processed by a data acquisition system. Piezoelectric pressure sensors are connected to a charge amplifier which converts the charge generated by the sensors into a proportional voltage signal. If the charge amplifier is an external device, it is referred to as a charge output or PE sensor. If the electronic circuit is integrated into the sensor housing, then it is referred to as a voltage output or IEP sensor. Depending on the application, piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge or voltage output may be suitable. The following comparison provides a better understanding what applications each sensor type is best used for. The signal conditioning to be used is dependent on the type of sensor and should be selected as follows. Charge amplifier for P sensors and IEP couplers for IEP sensors. A charge amplifier is the appropriate signal conditioning solution for PE sensors. The amplifier converts the charge signal of the sensor into a proportional voltage signal and thus makes measurement available for further processing. On the other hand, an IEP coupler is to be used for signal conditioning for IEP sensors. The coupler supplies a constant current to power the sensor and decouples the measured AC signal from the DC power supply. PE pressure sensors and charge amplifiers must be connected with a low noise, high impedance cable. IP pressure sensors and IP couplers can be connected with a cost effective standard coaxial cable or a low noise, high impedance cable. Customers measuring dynamic or quasi-static pressures usually analyze the pressure signal in the time domain. Customers measuring pressure pulsations, however, mostly analyze the pressure signal in the frequency domain. 
the time constant determines the cutoff frequency of the high pass characteristic of the charge amplifier or IP coupler. The following diagram shows the relationship between the time constant and the high pass cutoff frequency. Depending on whether the time domain or the frequency domain is of interest, one or the other view is better suited. A small or short time constant has an impact on slow, respective static parts of the pressure signal. It is basically filtering away the low frequency content of the pressure signal. Like an AC mode on an oscilloscope has the same effect. A large or long time constant has an impact on static pressure measurements due to the drift. The drift limits the possible measurement time, hence the term quasi-static. This mode is sometimes also called DC mode. Drift is however only an issue when measuring with a time constant long, with short there is no drift. The drift limits the possible measurement time of static pressures. Time constant with P sensors. Most charge amplifiers support long and short time constants. When using P sensors with a charge amplifier, only set the time constant to short when measuring pressure pulsations, when static pressure is not relevant. Otherwise, only use long. Time constant with IEP sensors. In an IEP measuring chain, there's two different time constants. One time constant for the IEP sensor and one time constant for the IEP coupler. The total time constant of the measuring chain is close to the smaller or shorter time constant of IEP sensor and IEP coupler. The shorter time constant of IEP sensor and coupler is the dominant one. When using IEP sensors, always check sensor and IEP coupler time constant and calculate the total time constant of the IEP measuring chain. Long time constants are not possible with IEP measuring chains. This is why IEP measuring chains are ideally, ideally suited for pressure pulsation measurements, but not for quasi-static pressure measurements. When measuring peak pressures from explosions, make sure to use a long time constant. Otherwise, you risk to measure a peak pressure which is too low. The pressure curves shown on this slide are from a hydrogen explosion. The black curve shows a measurement with a too short time constant. As can be seen, this leads to a wrong measurement of the peak pressure. Using the right time constant is very important. Static pressures can only be measured by piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge output and a charge amplifier in which a long time constant can be set. Due to their operating principle, piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge output indicate a small drift when a static pressure is applied. This drift limits the measuring time in which static pressure can be measured with this technology. This is why piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge output are considered capable of measuring quasi-static pressures, but not true static pressures. Piezoelectric pressure sensors are therefore the preferred choice for measuring quasi-static pressures in applications with a need for small pressure sensors or measurements at cryogenic or high temperatures over 125 degrees Celsius or 257 degrees Fahrenheit. Below graph is intended to help you reach your decision. It shows whether a piezoelectric pressure sensor can be used for your static measurement or whether it is only appropriate to use a piezoresistive pressure sensor. The graphic very clearly shows that long measurement times pose no problems for piezoelectric pressure sensors if the pressures are sufficiently large. However, piezoresistive pressure sensors are clearly preferable for long-term 
monitoring tasks. Piezoelectric pressure sensors may be regarded as spring mass systems with a single degree of freedom and typical damping coefficient values of about 0.05 to 0.1. Piezoelectric pressure sensors therefore behave like a second order system. When using piezoelectric pressure sensor, make sure to set a low pass filter either in your charge amplifier or in your IEP data acquisition system with a frequency of about 10 to 30% of the sensor's natural frequency. The sampling rate on the other hand needs to be at least two times higher than the low pass filter that you have set. If possible, make it even 10 times higher. The two pressure curves shown in this slide are from the same hydrogen explosion. The blue curve was sampled with a high sampling rate, the orange curve with a too low sampling rate. As can be seen, a sampling rate which is too low will lead to the measurement of a wrong peak pressure. Setting the right low pass filter and sampling rate is very important for the correct pressure measurement. In this last slide, I would like to summarize the most important points of today's webinar. Piezoelectric pressure sensors are ideally to measure dynamic pressures, pressure pulsations and quasi-static pressures. Check for each application if a piezoelectric pressure sensor with charge or voltage output is the better option. For piezoelectric pressure sensors with charge output, only use time constant short when measuring pressure pulsations. Set the low pass filter of the data acquisition at about 10 to 30% of the pressure sensor's natural frequency. Set the sampling rate of the data acquisition at least two times higher than the low pass filter, but even better would be 10 times higher. Many thanks for watching this video in which I explained the basics of piezoelectric pressure sensors and what kind of applications piezoelectric pressure sensors are best used for. All the provided information and much more can be found in our test and measurement pressure catalog. And for further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thanks.